All right, so she already know Sonic Superstars has been out for over a week now, which means it's the time to give my thoughts on the game. But to be honest, it feels like it's been out for a century because I don't know, like my brain's just blocked out beating that game. <laughs> it feels like ages ago that I beat the game. I'm like, I'm blocked out with like Mario Wonder and Spider-Man 2. And for those of you wondering, no, we're not going to do a big, a massive comparison with this to Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I mean, I could in a separate video, but I'm still like on World 4. Like I still got a few more worlds left to beat. And quite frankly, I just wanted to have one video where I talk about this game and compare it to you know other Sonic games like other classic styled games or whatnot since I know people are just gonna get mad if I compare it to Mario because Mario will just win right so I figured I'll break this video down into three categories since there's three modes in the game there's the main story mode then there's the trip mode and then there's the lost story I mean I guess there's a battle mode as well not much to say on that but I guess you can briefly talk about that at the end but we'll go into the categories and describe how I feel by each category and pretty much just summarize my thoughts on the game so we're gonna get to all this right now, but if subscribe to the channel already, please make sure to subscribe, okay? So for those of you who are wondering, Sonic Superstar does something that is different from every single classic Sonic game in terms of the progression. With every other classic Sonic game, you beat the main game with one character, you get the Chaos Emeralds, and then you get to the true ending, right? Well, at least for Sonic 3 and Knuckles, because Sonic 2 doesn't have a true ending. I mean, you can get the Chaos Emeralds and get a slightly different end cutscene, but it's the same boss without Super Sonic. Sonic 1 doesn't have a supersonic ending either in terms of the boss itself. CD, I honestly don't remember. I don't play that mid a lot, but I don't think it had a supersonic ending either. It really is just Sonic 3 and Knuckles, right? Nonetheless, there's a supersonic ending here, but they do something somewhat similar to the GOATs, right? So in Sonic Heroes, you don't just beat one team and get the Chaos Emeralds and get the true ending. You gotta beat all the four teams. Now, obviously, they did this one to make the playthrough longer, but also two because the final ending involves playing as all four teams. So it's a bit ridiculous to say play one team and then use that knowledge to play as a bunch of other teams that you've never played before, right? So there's two reasons for that. With Superstars, it feels like there's just one reason, and that reason is to make the game longer, right? Because you have to beat the main story mode, collect all the seven emeralds, then do trip mode before unlocking the last story with Supersonic. Trip herself isn't really playable in the Supersonic ending, so why do we need to beat trip mode to get to that ending? Again, I love Sonic Heroes, right? If the game is fun, I don't really care that much about something like this. So some people thought of it as like some kind of just padding out the game with like an encore mode then it is an encore mode but it's significantly more difficult than the main mode so it's basically play normal version of the game then play hard version of the game then you get the true ending which is also some people are saying it wasn't that hard other people are saying it, it was hard it's not even that the boss itself was hard it's just it was very reliant on rng but we'll get into that later let's start with the main game okay since this is the main category we're going to spend the most time on this one obviously there were 11 zones in the game and my summary is that pretty much none of them were s tier you had bridge island zone and speed jungle zone which are probably the best two zones in the game and they were the first two zones in the game right they had some of the strongest music i know everyone goes on about t lopes and his great music and he has some here like bridge island zone at one is a great track to be fair to juice Noe though he did come up with the melodies for that track if you listen to the credits of the game you can hear the sonic 4 sounding bridge island zone music which is the original and t lopes just redid the instruments so we have to give credit to juno as well even though when it comes to non-rock music he tends to be very inconsistent and speaking of inconsistent this soundtrack is the most inconsistent sonic soundtrack of all time usually a sonic soundtrack has a grade and all the songs lie somewhere around that letter grade this one has songs that could be as high as s tier and as low as e tier in the same game in the same game Nonetheless, yes, Tilos did great on Bridge Island Zone Act 1. Music-wise, Speed Jungle Act 1 is pretty good as well, but in my personal opinion, the best song in the game is Speed Jungle Zone Act 2, which actually isn't Tilos, it's someone else. I forgot on the name of the person. There was quite a few composers working on this game. It wasn't just Tilos and Jun Sonoe, but whoever did Speed Jungle Zone Act 2, bro was cooking, that shit was hitting. The music on that, whoo! Like, that's one of the few songs I play on repeat in this game. It's, it's Speed Jungle Zone at 2, Bridge Island Zone at 1. Like, those two, well, those are the top two songs in the game. Real talk. But back to the quality of the zones. Yes, Bridge Island Zone and Speed Jungle Zone were the best zones in the game. 
if I was being generous, I could give them A tier in terms of zone quality. But it's probably like B plus or some shit like that. I don't, there was no, there was no zone that really stood out. Like, oh my god, this zone is amazing. I mean, there were zones that had great music, but not like zones that stood out in terms of the quality of the level design. Like, if we compare it to Sonic Mania, which would be the most recent competition for this game, Mania just excels at a much higher degree in level design. I guess Sega thought they could just bite the physics code from Mania and they'd be on their merry way, and the game would hit right. But there's a lot more to Mania than just the perfect recreation of the classic physics. Although the classic peers will say there wasn't perfect recreation, there were some things that were different. I noticed a few differences, but that's besides the point. Level design wise, the quality of Mania is just so much higher. You play Green Hill Act 2, Chemical Plant Act 2, Flying Battery Act 2, Studiopolis Act 1 and 2, like you can just feel more intricate level design is being displayed in Mania. Bridge Island Zone and Speed Jungle, you can tell are decent zones, but nothing that stands out so greatly that you're like, oh my god, it's amazing, right? And I'm not just saying this because Prem hating on whatever's just come out. Like, Sonic 2 is my favorite class of Sonic game. I don't think Emerald Hill was crazy or anything like that. Like, I consider it one of the weaker first zones out of the classics, right? I consider Green Hill Zone to be stronger from a level design standpoint to Emerald Hill. I consider Mushroom Hill and Angel Island to be stronger first levels as well. And Sonic 2 is my favorite again. But like, Angel Island and Mushroom Hill just hit on different levels, especially Angel Island. Like, that was a well designed level. And even if we venture outside of the precious classics, I mean, <laughs> Leaf Storm and Sonic Rush, that shit was hitting. Speed running, Leaf Storm, Act 1 and Act 2, some of the most fun I've ever had as a Sonic fan. I repeat, speed running, Leaf Storm, Act 1 and Act 2 on that time attack is some of the most fun I've ever had as a Sonic fan. Back to Superstars. Let's move on to Zone 3, Sky Temple Zone. Zone was kind of mid, let's be real. It, it reminded me of that zone from like, was it Advance 3? Is it Chaos Angel? Or even the one from Advance 2, Sky Canyon. In terms of the aesthetic, that's what I thought. But yeah, Sky Temple was pretty, uh, uh, it wasn't horrible, but it was nothing really special about it, in my opinion. As for bosses, we'll, we'll talk about those later, okay? We'll talk about those later. Then we get to Pinball Carnival Zone. I mean, it's another pinball level, right? I mean, it wasn't bad. Again, it was cool. There was nothing crazy special about it. Like, again, none of these levels are reaching anything higher than B tier so far, right? I'd rather play Casino Night. I don't know if I'd rather play Carnival Night. I wasn't the biggest fan of Carnival Night, to be fair. I'd rather play Night Carnival, though. Like, Carnival Night? Mm, but Night Carnival? That should be hitting. Then you got Lagoon City. Yeah, I mean, it's a water theme level, right? It's okay, I guess. I mean, it feels like it was taking too many cues from Hydrocity Act 1 and Mania, which felt like it was taking too many cues from Labyrinth Zone in terms of the way it was so much slower. Not a bad zone by any means, but just nothing special about it, really, once again. Sand Sanctuary is where the Oshima starts to take place right remember oshima is the one who directed sonic cd the only one of the classic games that was directed by someone else other than yuji naka for the record once you get to sand sanctuary you start to feel the the cds-ness really creep in with the bullshit level design and the random things all over the place and the traps and the uh, 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 it's just it's like cd but worse right like the beginning of the game i would have never considered to be worse than cd but once you start getting to like sand sanctuary onwards it's like you start to feel that bullshit start to creep in, right? And then it gets even worse when you get into Press Factory Zone. There's like a bouncy thing, because CD loves bouncing you around. It's like a bouncy thing that just in the background that just bounces you. If you're on the ground, it bounces you up. And when you're trying to go certain places, there's points in the level where you got to go down and it won't let you go down because the bouncy will show up and bounce you back up again. It's just like, and some people tried to come up with a rebuttal to this when I mentioned this in my stream, like, but the Chemical Planet like 2 and me, Mania has bouncy, yes, but it's executed correctly. It's executed well, it's executed in a way that's fun, not in a way that hinders you or feels like an annoyance, but in a way that enhances the level. This here does not feel like an enhancement, it feels like I'm playing Sonic CD. Now, some of you already know this, but I don't hate the Sonic 4 soundtrack. You know, Jun Tsunoue, like, he had some decent melodies in that soundtrack. In this game, per se, I wouldn't say that he was on his best behavior, but out of the Jun Tsunoue songs that he did fully, I believe the Press Factory ones were some of the hardest hitting out of his stuff, right? I think, especially Act 2, it was decent, okay? Golden Capital Zone is another example of bullshit, right? It looks like a discount launch base zone in some way, but then it throws in pinball-y C the elements into it where you're just bouncy bouncing again why 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 not a horrible zone but not a zone that i want to really go back to then you got cyber station zone which looked like the most creative one in the trailers it had that whole geometry dash kind of aesthetic to it in reality it wasn't really 
a favorite zone of mine. I kind of felt like basically the trailers would be one of the earlier zones, but it's actually the ninth zone in the game, which is pretty surprising. It's got the whole fake wisp thing going for it as well. It wasn't a bad zone, but again, forgettable, nothing really special. Like, cool aesthetic, but just not really special. And then he got Frozen Base Zone, which is the penultimate zone. And it's kind of like, well, a Frozen Base, as you would expect. I mean, it's no ice cap, let's just be real. Like, was it a bad zone? No, but was it anything special? No. I'm getting tired of saying this. It actually kind of looks like Frozen Factory from Sonic Lost World, which that game is turning 10, I can't believe it. Anyway, final zone is Egg Fortress Zone. And of course it ends with the final boss of the main game. Egg Fortress Zone, I guess was cool. I mean it felt like a final zone i guess they had the end in the background you know the purple planet from frontiers which i don't know how the law works but didn't they say this thing happened before adventure one so why is the end there has the end just always been there and we just were supposed to believe that it was there this whole time and that's why it's here i don't know trying to make sense of this law is ridiculous but yeah egg fortress zone it was all right they did that whole pizza tower thing in act two where you go in reverse and whatnot and then that's pretty much the end of the game i mean you've got the bosses of course i didn't really talk much about the bosses but to summarize some bosses are obviously pretty decent in quality surprisingly and then some are just mid but even the ones that are decent in quality drag on for way too long and don't let you do multiple hits on them like you could do in the classics like if you were skilled and fast you could get more hits per cycle to get through the boss quicker here they force you to do only one hit with these long ass invincibility frames they have to wait ages before you can get another hit especially in that golden capital zone with the lava floating around boss oh my god you're just sitting there for ages and of course there's no checkpoints in these bosses given how long some of them can be it's just so annoying man and listen i've said this shit before with even sonic 3 and knuckles and mania right i was never the biggest fan of bosses every act Sonic 2 to me is the perfect structure for a Sonic game. 2x, then a boss. Then you do it again. Simple as that. I don't need 3x. I don't need a boss every single act. I just don't need it. Now with Sonic 3 and Mania, the Act 1 bosses were never that long, so it was a lot more tolerable. But in this game, they just be giving you long ass bosses that sometimes are the same length or even longer than the level you're playing. Which makes me really not want to like play the game. Because like even if some acts are tolerable, it's like, I'd rather just play Sonic 4 because the bosses aren't as in your face. I mean, episode 2's final boss could be a bitch, but in general, the bosses aren't that in your face. I could just breeze through Sonic 4 and it'll be like a relaxing evening or whatever, right? But with this game, I'm like, I'm going to spend half the time doing bosses. And who really wants to do that, right? And before someone in the comments is like, me, I like doing bosses more than level. Cool. But I don't, okay? I want like 80 plus percent level and whatever's left to be boss like i don't need like this kind of every single act give me a boss that drags on and i can't even do multiple hits on it and whatnot it's weird too because it's not even like the bosses are bad it's just like they just drag like if it was a boss rush mode and i was in a boss playing mood i could go through the boss rush just enjoy the bosses for what they are but when i'm in level playing mode it just feels like it's getting in the way of everything it's really annoying I just want to make that clear because it's not truly a boss issue. It's more of a pacing issue, right? The Fang boss in the main story is not a bad boss. It just goes on for way too long. And if I could get more hits quicker, it wouldn't feel like that, right? And if it wasn't a boss every act, it probably wouldn't feel like that either. And that's especially true for the final boss in the main story as well, because you have these sections where you're facing off against Eggman and he shoots projectiles at you that you're supposed to hit back at him. And he'll shoot like a million projectiles at you and you get to hit one back at him and it basically hits Eggman, right? But like, if I could hit two of those projectiles at him and get two hits in, that'd just be a lot more enjoyable, especially on repeat playthroughs, right? And most of the issues I have with the main story continue on to the Trip story, but just worse. So in Trip story, you play as obviously Trip, and they reveal who she is or whatever, and you play as her with her abilities. She can like spike up the walls like the Pink Wisp, and she's got a double jump like Amy. I didn't actually talk about the other characters, like Knuckles has got the glide and the climb. His glide is pretty slow and useless. The climbing i guess is cool tails can obviously fly that's good amy's double jump is pretty nice and that's pretty much it for them but yeah trip is fine to control i guess her super form is really weird she turns into a dragon or something i, I don't know but trip's levels are just hard mode right and of course when it comes to hard mode and sega they don't know how to do it with you know elegance right it's always throwing more bullshit so if there was little traces of cd bullshit let's make it even worse than cd in trip mode right all sorts of weird 
bad level design that just why is this here like golden capital zone in particular has some really bullshit section where i'm like how am i supposed to get through this like this is just ridiculous right it's like you're brute forcing your way through poorly designed levels effectively that's that's what trip mode felt like it, it was just it was just not fun like i'm all up for a challenge right but it was just not the fun kind of challenge right if you want to make a hard mode it can't just be spamming random blocks in places that they shouldn't be and hoping for the best or i, I don't know what they were thinking with that trip mode i mean not to bring up the goat but like i feel like the way they did hard mode with team dark was really good like i mean yes yeah, sometimes they added too many enemies but uh, most of the time i feel like they actually made tougher level design in certain sections and also gave you the full longer version of the level like it wasn't just enemy spam and call it a day like super hard mode and heroes again wasn't just enemy spam and call it a day there was a bit of enemy spam but a lot of the time there was like harder sections in the level you're like okay this is genuinely harder but not in a complete bullshit way like it's still fair trip mode was just so awkward and i, I don't see the need or the desire to even play trip mode except for the fact that you have to do it to get the last story now your emeralds carry over so you've already got super trip at this point if you got the emeralds in the main game and actually speaking of the emeralds and the medals and stuff i guess i should talk about that you got three kind of bonus stages you got one random one where you just get a bunch of rings in a blue cloud that's just forgettable no one cares about that then you got the sonic one special stages to get the medals i don't hate the sonic one special stages so i guess it was fine but you know they're just for the medals for battle mode which again battle mode was made unforgettable who cares and then you got the main special stages which i kind of just brute forced the first six emeralds without really thinking about how to play the special stages properly i just kind of winged all six and i was fine and then i got to the seventh one and i got stuck on it because i didn't really know how to do the special stages. i was winging it the whole time and i just it just worked so by the time i got to the seventh one i was like oh you swing on that thing with the gold and you get more time and then you use the booster and so i had to actually figure out how they worked to actually beat the last one so i retried the last one so many times even though the first six i all did first try so i guess take from that what you will i'm glad they did something different with the special stage instead of just copying the previous one but i wouldn't put it over my favorite special stages like the mania ones or the half pipes in sonic rush or even sonic 4 episode 2 i love those special stages but yeah trip mode you know it, it was just a lot of bullshit zero reason to play it aside from getting to the lost story it's like i can't think of a single moment when trip mode was just better than playing the main story in terms of the levels we could make an argument for the bosses because in my personal opinion the final boss in trip mode is better than the final boss in the main story because the final boss in trip mode you face off against fang and aside from a little bit of bullshit i would say it was a stronger boss than the eggman final boss it took a lot of time to beat because again it was, it was pretty tough it had two big phases and no checkpoint after phase one which it really should have had one but it didn't also a lot of projectiles show up and you're supposed to hit Hit the projectiles back at fang and of course it only lets you hit one at a time so even if you hit two at him it still counts as one hit that way they drag the boss on longer which i think is bullshit he's got one like move where he just smacks into you and you have no way of knowing that's going to happen unless you've seen it happen before so the first time he does it you're going to die it's, it's really annoying but it is what it is right now we get to the last story you finally be in trip mode you beat in the main story you get to the last story you fight evil spire the dragon i don't know why he's there they try to explain it in the animations i don't know why the fuck there's a dragon there they're not allowed to talk right it's the 1990s i don't know anyway the boss is pretty eh. you can tell they used a lot of mania coded because the exact way the rings fly around is the same way they fly around in egg reverie and mania it's like the same physics or same ring movement you could just tell they took it straight from there which again is not a bad thing Okay, I'm not knocking them for borrowing that element from Mania. I'm knocking them because the boss was pretty mid, right? None of the attacks are really dire except for the voids that they can suck you into, which you'd have to like dash out of. Most of the attacks are just time wasting attacks because you need rings and the attacks are wasting so much time that you're gonna run out of rings and die, right? Which means you're really at the mercy of being able to grab enough rings. Of course, there's so much RNG when it comes to the ring stuff that you're just really hoping that you get a good amount of rings. For example, Amy and Trip will show up and give you like three ring boxes, which is like 30 rings. Well, I think it might even be four ring boxes or 40 rings, but most people only saw that like once in their playthrough and that was it. So if you're retrying, you're probably not going to see that again. Usually you're relying on Tails and Knuckles to show up and give you maybe 10 at most 20 rings. And it's like a random kind of timer interval. So you could get really bad ring RNG where they just don't show up 
or they do show up at a point where you can't actually grab the rings because then evil spiral would then change the dimension and you'll be able to grab those rings or you get really good rng where they show up a lot and you get tons and tons of rings and the boss becomes easy because the attacks themselves are not the major threat the real threat is ring management and because the ring management is so heavily based on rng you're kind of at the mercy of the level to get good rng the only real skill involved in this boss is making sure that when you're going from left to right trying to hit him that you avoid his attacks so that you can hit him before he leaves that's the only real skill part there's an arm that's supposed to hit you or something and in that section you're supposed to hit the arm i didn't know how to do that on purpose the only time i hit the arm correctly or the hand or whatever was by accident it was a very messy boss not one that i liked if you gave us more rings it would be more tolerable but it wouldn't be a great boss and i mean that's pretty much the game battle mode you've got medals to unlock more cosmetic items in battle mode battle mode is pretty bare bones and basic i didn't really have any crazy fun with it or anything like that i guess this is a neat little bonus i guess but not something i would sink hours into or anything like that like even within the first week of the game coming out it was like matching me with bots anyway so people clearly aren't playing this but yeah that's sonic superstars right i've been doing some polls on my community tab and people tend to be making up fake sequels because they feel like something is similar like they'll call games like heroes sa3 or games like 06 sa3 or call games like colors ds rush 3 even though it doesn't have the trick system or playable blaze and it's not called rush 3 it's named off the colors because it has the wish they'll be coming up with all sorts of sequels in their head right so i figured i'll give this game a sequel in its head right and no i'm not gonna call it mania 2 no i'm not gonna call it the real sonic 5 or some bullshit like that i want to call it sonic 4 episode cd why because think about it right sonic 4 episode 1 was trying so desperately to copy sonic 1 right and it wasn't as good what comes after sonic 1 that's sonic 2 right sonic 4 episode 2 tries to copy sonic 2 of course it wasn't as good right i mean it added tails and it did things and i liked sonic 4 episode 2 it wasn't great but it it wasn't as good as Sonic 2. What comes after Sonic 2? Not Sonic 3, it's Sonic CD from 1993. This feels like Sonic 4 episode CD. You switch out the classic model, put in the Sonic 4 model, throw in a home attack, it's Sonic 4 episode CD. That's that's like the name I would give it, right? If I was gonna give it my own name, right? It just feels like it's trying to be Sonic CD, but yet somehow worse. I don't know how you get worse than CD. Like I, I really don't know how you managed to pull that off because that's like my least favorite classic game. Not including the 8-bit shit because otherwise we'll be here forever. But that was like my least favorite classic game and some somehow they managed to make a game that was worse than that and it's a shame too because it started off a lot better like at the beginning like the first half i wouldn't have said it was worse than cd but after that you start to get into like the press factory era like then it starts to feel like okay what are they doing here like what what is this why why is there so much bullshit like when i started playing the game like the main game i was thinking of giving it like a 7 out of 10 which is like a b for me and then once i got to the later zones i dropped it to like a 6 out of 10 then I got to like trip mode and then the last story and I was like, this is like a five out of 10. It was just like getting worse. Like it had a strong first impression. They had the Bridge Island Zone, they had the Telos music, they had the Speed Jungle. Then it's like just bit by bit, it just can't get worse and worse and worse. I like the Hubbles though. The Hubbles are pretty beautiful. I think they did a good job with the Hubbles. Of course, they ruined that with some of the worst music in the game that loops way too quickly. But nonetheless, that is Sonic Superstars. In my opinion, it is the weakest of these classic games, not including 8-bit. I would rather play Sonic 1. I'd rather play Sonic 2. Yes, I'd rather play Sonic CD. Of course, I'd rather play Sonic 3 and Knuckles. I'd rather play Sonic Mania. And I'd rather play Sonic 4, both episodes. I really hate to say that, right? I don't I don't want to say things like this, right? I was I gave it a fair chance chance but it just it just wasn't it right it wasn't it and i guess this is the person that made cd so what was i expecting right made cd the last thing they did was battle and wonder world so like <laughs> Not really a surprise to me like she was still a legend obviously but i'm just saying like this this is not it in my opinion the long dragon on bosses alone would make me not want to replay this game anyway like if you remove the long draggy bosses then i could still replay it from time to time like the way i replay sonic 4 once every however many years i guess but with those long ass bosses do i have a desire to replay this no not at all like 
I just don't. And as I said multiple times in my stream, like it's a sixty dollar game. It currently in the UK at least costs more than Sonic Frontiers. It currently costs more than Super Mario Bros. Wonder. And I would just not recommend anyone purchase this game unless it's heavily discounted. Anything under forty before you even consider. If it's if it's above forty, don't even buy it. That's just the way I feel. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Sonic Superstars. I think later on we will do the real comparison. You know, comparing it to the Mario shit. Once again, I've really been enjoying Super Mario Bros. Wonder. I, I love how they've been taking cues from Mario Maker to make more challenging level design because like, Mario Maker had such great levels in it. Obviously, there was a lot of fodder in there as well, but some of the best levels in Mario Maker was because people were doing shit that Nintendo would never do for fear of, you know, challenging the players too much. But it seems like they've been taking cues at Mario Maker and going, hmm, maybe we need to push the players a little bit more. Some of those higher difficulty levels, they began to rise out on me. Like, like I'd be feeling it. Anyway. Let me know what you guys think about Sonic Superstars. Is it one of your favorite classic Sonic games? Where would you rank it in your tier list of classic Sonic or even 2D Sonic games, right? Those of you who don't know, my S tier when it comes to 2D Sonic is Rush, 2 and 3 on its own, no Knuckles. A tier then has Sonic Mania and Sonic and Knuckles and also Sonic 1. B tier has Sonic 4 Episode 2 and C tier has Sonic 4 Episode 1 and Sonic CD, leaving Superstars in D tier. Be sure to like and subscribe, hit that bell. And of course, a big shout out to all my channel members. If you want to become a channel member, you can click the join button next to the subscribe button. But yeah, man, thanks you guys for watching. It's been real. The Remy, yeah.